Today is the 10th anniversary of the 2013 El Reno tornado, the widest track on record in SPC's database at 2.6 miles. And that's it right there. Very tragic day. Eight deaths, 151 injuries, and $40 million in damage. And also a lesser known tragedy, the 1985 tornado outbreak in the Northeast. That was the worst tornado outbreak of the 1980s. 43 tornadoes across Ohio, Pennsylvania, New York, Ontario, 89 dead and thousands injured with 600 million in damage. Well, thankfully, nothing like that going on today. The Pacific North American Oscillation, that is starting to trend up just a little bit. And the Madden Julian Oscillation is in Phase 8 now. What happens in Phase 8? Dry in the Four Corners in Arizona, wet in northeast New Mexico, into the Panhandles in East Texas, and cool in the northeastern U.S. And that's very much like what we have today. In fact, let's take a look at that surface map. For this afternoon, it is starting to look a little bit like summertime, although in the western states, another active Pacific system moving through Utah. A little bit of a westerly component there in Arizona, although they're still in the 90s, could be a lot worse. In Texas and the Great Plains, we've got southerly flow coming up from the Gulf. We always look for that onshore versus offshore component, and it appears we're looking at uh, maybe kind of indeterminate out east, but definitely onshore there in Texas. And that's feeding a lot of that precip out in the Rockies and the High Plains. In the Gulf of Mexico, we've got this new low trying to get established. We're not really looking for that to do much. Here in the U.S., it looks like that's going to sit out in the offshore waters for maybe a couple days and then drift southward. We'll take a look at that shortly. And let's start out with the weather in the northeastern U.S. South flow is in effect, temperatures up to the 80s. And even up there in Maine, we're seeing 88 to 89 degrees. So warm air advection is back in force. And not much moisture with that. Seeing a lot of VFR, clear skies. And only out there in Michigan do we start picking up some of the thunderstorm activity. In fact, a band from Indianapolis up through Chicago to Green Bay and up to Sault Ste. Marie. There have been drought conditions in that part of the country, so they are, I'm sure, very relieved to get that precip. In the southeastern states, you can see just how disturbed it is. Extensive broken to overcast cloud cover in the Bahamas, in the state of Florida itself. Then you can see this curl, kind of a common cloud off the west coast of Florida. That's that developing low that we're going to look at shortly. And north of that, considerable tropical moisture all the way up to Indianapolis, Louisville, Nashville, and down into the New Orleans area. In Texas and the southern plains, very summer-like, I did not even think to put a dry line in. You could probably ink one in right there, just east of Albuquerque, east of El Paso, dew points there in the 30s and 40s. They rise significantly into the 50s and 60s there in eastern New Mexico. Thunderstorms associated with that nose of moisture coming up from the Gulf. And you can see those dew points around Lubbock and Clovis are well into the 60s. There's that thunderstorm activity breaking out from Santa Fe down to Klein's Corner and down to Roswell and just west of Odessa. Some strong storms as well north of Amarillo and up to La Junta and Lamar and a few small cells breaking out around Stillwater and Ponca City. And flood watches are in effect for some parts of the Texas Panhandle and northeastern New Mexico. Further up to the north in the northern plains, Montana is back into a rainy weather pattern. They've got flood watches this afternoon from Glasgow and Jordan down to Billings, Harlowtown, and close to Yellowstone. You can see those cool easterly winds, upslope flow, and dew points up near 50 to 55 degrees. The southwestern states looking dry, although some evidence of strong flow 
that's it right there. That's an indication of mountain wave activity around the Tucson, Safford, Douglas area, and further to the north, lots of disturbed weather. This is all indicative of an upper level low. And you can even see the curl in the wind flow right there. See that little tendency towards spiraling? Let's take a look at the upper air chart. There's the 500 millibar heights and vorticity at this time, showing low pressure aloft or low heights, basically the same thing. That's centered over Kingman. So that definitely puts the comet cloud out ahead of it and wrapping around the northwest side. This area down to the southeast, that's getting some dry flow from the south. And we can compare that with the surface map here, some indication of low pressure in southern Utah, the upper level lo located right there. So there is a little bit of a vertical tilt towards the cold air located in Southern California. It doesn't look all that cold temperatures in the 80s. However, in the mid and upper levels, the 700 millibar chart showing that pocket of cool air over Western Arizona with temperatures there below positive four Celsius. In the Northwestern US, they're on the backside of this polar front. During the summertime though, that can mean more weather rather than less weather. And indeed, we do see showers and thunderstorms across Idaho, down into Nevada, and temperatures in the 70s, dew points in the 50s. In the mountainous terrain, that definitely will support weather. And there's the radar this afternoon out of Boise. Thunderstorms rolling off the Owyhee Plateau into the Snake River Valley, located right here along the interstate. And scattered showers and storms in eastern Idaho. This is the Pocatello radar. There is concern that the Portneuf Dam spillway located out in here may fail. This is a look earlier this afternoon, and yeah, that looks pretty bad. You can see the erosion underneath that concrete. And if that gives way, that could affect Lava Hot Springs and Pocatello. Well, this appears to be it. Looks to be about a quarter mile wide and maybe a few miles long. I don't know what the depth is, but yeah, that could be a problem if that gives way. And then we head up the west coast into British Columbia. Looks rather cool there. 40s and 50s in the northwest part of the province. And Alaska looking cool as well. In fact, we've got a little bit of snow there in the Brooks Range back towards Kotzebue. Some cold rain around Inuvik. And heading out to the east into the Canadian High Arctic, just still cold. There's a thermal trough right there over Baffin Island, so more cold air slingshotting south into Quebec and helping to feed that Hudson Bay low that we're going to be seeing start to reestablish itself going into the weekend. And we're going to look at that shortly. But you can see this afternoon some rather warm conditions in the Quebec interior up to 90 degrees near James Bay. And we saw close to 90 degrees along Hudson Bay back on Monday, but that's definitely cooled down, back down into the 30s. So here's the 500 millibar chart, the mid-troposphere up at about 20,000 feet. There's that low there over Arizona, fast flow going into northwest Mexico and into New Mexico. So that's associated with those stronger bulk shears. Any storms that we can get going within that, they will tend to be strong and maybe a few severe storms mixed in. And the rest of the country looks rather blocky. We've got a very weak cutoff high across New York, so no wonder it's very warm up there. We've got troughing down to the south, that little low out there in the Gulf. The rest of the country, though, is a little bit more like what we see during June. So let's see what happens. That low in Arizona starts to make its way through the Rockies going into Thursday and emerges out into the plains, dragging the fast flow with it. So we're going to see a bit of an increase in thunderstorm activity going into Thursday and Friday, especially in Texas and New Mexico. Still remains quite blocky out east. We've got this cutoff high right there, a low, and another low along the Carolinas coast. So you may be thinking that the Hudson Bay vortex is broken down. I mean, look at that big old high out there. That's completely got that shut down. But let's go into the weekend. Here's Friday and Saturday. And here's this low coming down. Hey guys, what's going on? 
and it moves down into the northeastern U.S. and sets up shop. So we're back into a Hudson Bay low type pattern. North flow through Ontario and Quebec. And look at what happens as we go into Monday and Tuesday. Its buddy shows up. See it up there in Quebec. And the whole thing widens out and we get right back into that fast northerly flow. So once again... We're looking at more cool weather for the northeastern U.S. And now we're bringing down minus 20s at 500 millibars, some very cool air. So that's going to mean the return of showers. They may be elevated, but it will still be a very good pattern for showers. Cool air aloft with warm conditions at the surface. And you can see what happens over the following week, Thursday and Friday next week. Just back in a stagnant pattern. Meanwhile, on the plains, we've got ridging from Texas up to Montana. And looks like more troughing out in California. But the model has had a lot of problems, especially with this blocky pattern. So I would not put too much stock in the forecast after about five to six days. So for the rest of today, SPC focusing on this slight risk along the Texas-New Mexico border. Then going into tomorrow, we see a slight risk around Lubbock. Minimal chances for tornadoes. Wind, 5%. Hail, 15%. So hail will be the main threat. And then the day three for Friday. Slight risk from Lubbock all the way down towards the Pecos River. And this time of year, we've got to check in on NHC. So they are looking for development well, they've got a 20% chance of cyclone formation. The GFS is certainly going for that. We'll look at that momentarily. The rest of the Atlantic looking pretty good. And I've got a new chart for you here. This is something we're going to be using during the summer. Hopefully you'll find this interesting. I'll probably get rid of these thickness lines. Those are red. Those don't help very much. But we do have the pressure in black and the streamlines in blue and the precip indicated by the colored shading. So we're not going to really be seeing very much, just kind of northeast flow through the entire tropics. Those are the trade winds. And we don't really see much in the way of disturbances except out there off Florida. And you can see the intertropical convergence zone right there from West Africa towards French Guiana. But we don't see any closed lows or no hurricanes or anything like that coming out into the Atlantic. So this is Wednesday next week, Thursday, Friday but we will be getting back into that stormy pattern, the Atlantic becoming active as we go into June and definitely by July, sometime in July at least. So this time of the year, moisture is everything. This is our plot of dew point and wind at the surface. The oranges are 60s dew points. The purple is 70s dew points. So starting out, we see the gulf is open in Texas, southerly flow all the way up to the Great Lakes. And as we get into that Hudson Bay vortex pattern, once again, that's going to take a few days. But in the meantime, there's that low off of Florida. And then up to the north there in the Great Lakes, you can see that cool air coming down and dragging with it dry air. And there it goes, dry air advection into the Great Lakes for Sunday. So a cool down in that part of the country and some of that dry air advection makes it all the way into Kentucky and Tennessee by Sunday. Then going into Monday and Tuesday, continuation of dry air into the southeastern U.S. If we have enough instability for thunderstorms, this could be a good pattern for microbursts. Not saying that's what's going to happen. We would have to look at other stuff as well. But anytime dry air comes down, especially in the mid-levels, that can be a concern. So big old anticyclone right here. Some flow around the periphery out of, out of the south there. And then at the very end of the period, next Thursday and Friday, 70s dew points coming up into the Great Plains. And this could be more of an active weather pattern. That looks like a front right there. Lots of moisture coming north. And I would guess that there's probably a little bit of troughing there in the western U.S. So severe weather may not be quite over. And that'll do it for this edition of Forecast Lab. Here's a little footage from around San Antonio, thanks to Greg. 
showing some of the high water levels in the creeks there as they've had quite a bit of rain. Special thanks to our newest supporter, Joe Grusing. Thank you very much for that support. Those contributions that we get via Patreon do help quite a bit to keep this program going. We'll see you back here on the Friday edition. Hope you have a great Wednesday evening and Thursday. Take care. Bye-bye.